I'm now delighted uh, in the next part of our Mortal Kombat franchise documentary to be joined by the one and only Dave E. Mitchell, who voiced the character Sector in Mortal Kombat 11. I suppose, uh, uh, Dave, uh, in terms of uh, your knowledge of uh, fighting games and your knowledge of video games, uh, Mortal Kombat, it's been around for 30 years, uh, an historic sort of fighting game, sort of franchise. And, I just want to ask you this sort of question uh, in terms of, we know it's big rivals uh, are Street Fighter and Tekken. Why do you think Mortal Kombat has succeeded uh, in, in terms of the big screen in, where maybe Street Fighter and Tekken have failed, uh, where Mortal Kombat has TV series in terms of Conquest and Legacy, and then we're on to our third sort of movie, while for Street Fighter and Tekken, the sort of big rivals, it, they try to adapt it to the big screen and it's I, I think largely, I mean, I've been a fan, I've actually been a big fan of fighting games, but specifically Mortal Kombat since way back. I mean, I, I played that, you know, in the arcade, I played that. I played Tekken, um, played Street Fighter, Street Fighter 2, uh, Killer Instinct, was, was into all of those. But the ones that just always just really got me going were always Mortal Kombat. And I think it's, I think a lot of it's just the, the characters that are there are just so there's it's such a cool range of characters and they're they're so interesting um you know the fight styles are really cool obviously the fatalities and then when you got into things like the you know the the babalities and the animalities and just all just all of that deep stuff was was really cool uh and the fact that like i, I remember when mk3 came out my friend and i used to play that and killer instinct on his super nintendo just hours and hours a, a day and loved killer instinct but the thing that was so cool about MK was that there were all these great combinations and even up till, you know, the current one, there are the cool combinations that you learn, but you really still have to learn how to trigger them. I think some of the other games, it kind of got to a thing where once you learn how to trigger a combo, you could just sit back and let the combo execute. So it got a little automatic, whereas I, I felt like Mortal Kombat kind of always kept you in it. And the characters are just, are just cool. I mean, you've got robot ninjas. Uh, do, you, do you really even need to say anything other than Robot Ninja? I mean, that's, how do you beat Robot Ninjas for cool? You don't. And I suppose, uh, Dave, you're sort of, you mentioned there, so obviously you were a childhood fan of Mortal Kombat. You played uh, most of the video games, uh, sort of deep uh, background so of the storyline of uh, Mortal Kombat. In terms of the movies itself, uh, when was the first time you watched the original movie, The Mark Comet, in 1995, or do you watch its predecessor, then in 1997, Annihilation? Well, here's the thing. I, I'm older than most people think. I'm, I'm 51 years old, so I didn't play any of this as a child. It didn't exist when I was a child. I was already in my 20s when this stuff came out. Um, but, oh, yeah, I went, to see, I went to see the first movie in the theater and absolutely loved it. I own it. I've watched it a million times. Um, I still, for me, the, uh, the Scorpion Johnny Cage fight and then the Reptile Liu Kang fight are two of the coolest things I ever saw in a movie. Um, love those. And then, uh, excuse me. Um, and then, uh, the second one, I saw that in the theater too. And, um, not as big a fan. Um, only, and it's unfortunate because they did bring in some really cool characters. The fact that they brought in Jax, the fact that they brought in the Lin Kuei, the fact that Smoke was in it, you know, was just really cool. But the tone of it had shifted. So it was, it was a little more kind of uh, almost, I don't know, Power Ranger-y. You know, it was a little more kind of kid-centered where the first movie still had, you know, it still had that game thing, but it also just, man, it, it just, it was, the fight scenes were so well done and just really enjoyed the storyline and it could because obviously it was straight out of the, the of the game it was the storyline of the game so um but uh the first one's definitely one i go back to uh plenty of times and you know i'd already played the games but it was my cousin actually introduced me i think the mk2 was the first one that i actually played um and i still have and listen to on a regular basis the cd from the immortals which is that hard house techno album of Mortal Kombat that was based off the first game that has obviously, you know, the big Mortal Kombat theme in it, but it's got themes for every one of the characters. I still listen to that CD to this day and I really love it. I mean, that's some obscure MK stuff right there. Uh, obscure MK stuff. Uh, Dave, I suppose, as you're aware, Mortal Kombat, a big fan base all over the world. It's not just confined to the US. This is a... Uh, 
massive in Asia, massive in Europe, massive in uh, South, uh, South Africa, uh, in, uh, in Africa, South America, I suppose. Recently, I saw something like 150 million copies recently of the game sold uh, worldwide in the last, uh, two, uh, last two or three years. So it's a fan base that's growing all the time. It's a case of where there are, uh, that there's a new fan base uh, that wasn't around 20 years ago are really immersing themselves with Marky Comet. So it's, it's, a, it's probably a franchise that has stood the test of time and is, is still growing at a rapid rate. Oh, for sure. And, and I think just to, to play directly into what you just said about standing the test of time, it, it absolutely has. And I think it's just because they've, I feel like they've really tried to up the ante with every new iteration of the game, particularly um, and if you look at what they did with MK11, that that whole storyline, I mean, there's a really well thought out and vivid storyline to follow there with a lot of details and interactions and the fact that you have kind of the three different versions of some of the of the primary fighter characters from different time periods. The fact that you've got Kronika and Garrus, you know, manipulating time. And I mean, it just it's it's really interesting, particularly because you get to play them off of each other. And I think I think that was the thing when when we were working on that. Uh, as a fan, I was just so struck by how intricate and deep the story was and, and just how cool that was. You know, and I just thought, man, this is, this is really bringing it here as far as depth of story and, and flushing out these characters and kind of looking at their histories and their futures and all that. So I think that's part of the reason why is that I don't feel like they've ever just sat back and said, eh, you know, oh, it's Mortal Kombat. We slap Mortal Kombat and people will buy it. I feel like they're really motivated every time that they really do want to push it and give something to the fans that they're going to react to and, and they're, they're going to enjoy. Yeah, and you mentioned the, the cut scenes in terms of uh, Mark and Combat 11. In terms of, you put that out in, in a cinema, just alone, cut scenes, you put it all together, an animation movie. I saw there on YouTube there in terms of, uh, you, you can actually watch all the animated scenes in terms of a movie. It's something that Oh, for really sure three and a half hours long and, and something of millions of sort of views. If you never actually played the fighting or you could actually sit down and watch it and be enthralled in terms of an animation sort of movie as well. So the depth in terms of creating a sort of a film within a game as well, that's what really they have done now with these recent editions of Market Combat. Absolutely. Market Absolutely. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, and, I, and I think it's just because the characters in the story is so interesting that they're, they're, it lends itself to that. And you really see that in games in general. You know, I mean, I, I work on a lot of games and uh, I'm constantly amazed with any new thing I work on, just the level of the writing and the characterization and the fact that it really is in so many cases, it's like working on a film that you get to control. That's kind of where gaming has gotten to. And, and you know, certainly I think with MK11, Mortal Kombat is absolutely part of that whole kind of that whole wave of, of really cinematic gaming. And I suppose, and that, great, so. yeah. and I suppose that Dave, you mentioned there that you played the character Garak in um, Vice character or Garak in Mortal Kombat 11. It's also yes. Vice, a, a sort of a historic sort of character in terms of the Mortal Kombat uh, circle, been around now for sort of 20 years, one of the sort of original sort of characters. When we think of Liu Kang, when we think of um, Shang Tsung, Sonya, Johnny Cage, Scorpion, and sort of Reptile, uh, uh, and Sub-Zero. The next stuff after that is Cyrex and Sector. And Absolutely. And uh, you played uh, the character Sector, I suppose, 20 years on. Uh, Sector is probably known throughout the Mortal Kombat universe, the guy who shoots uh, rockets out of his uh, stomach, as the saying goes. Uh, how did the opportunity come about for you to get cast as the voice, uh, voiceover actor of Sector? Uh, was this something that your agent brought you as a script? And obviously, you were probably aware of that character, I suppose, before you got the, the job. You probably weren't aware of the Garax character because that's a, a new, new recent addition. Yeah. yeah, it was uh, well. It was interesting because Garrus was was the new was a new character. So for me, as a longtime hardcore MK fan, to get to not only be a player character but to introduce a brand new character was really exciting. And Garrus is a cool character too. But the funny thing was, so uh, typically with games, you'll you'll end up playing. Uh, you can play up to three characters. That's the way the contract works. So even if you're playing a lead, sometimes you'll play a couple of ancillary characters or supporting characters. Uh, and in this case, you know, I got the, the booking to go work on Garrus at Warner Brothers. And uh, 
or to, to work on gear. So I, but when I got there, I saw that I had two characters that I was lined up to do, Garrus and Sector. And the, and the director on it is a, is a very dear friend of mine I've worked with a million times, Amanda Wyatt. And, and I said, uh, I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. Sector, as in like Lin Kuei Robo Ninja Sector? She's like, yeah, you're playing Sector too. And I was like, what? What do you mean I'm playing Sector? And I said, Sector is my favorite character from the entire MK universe and I get to be him? And she was like, yes, you do. And she told me, I don't know who else it was, but she said that I was the second actor on that game that had come in playing a character that was our personal favorite character from the, that universe. So that was, I mean, I was over the moon for that. I, I wish that he had been playable, um, but just the, the, just getting to be him at all. And the, you know, if you look at those cutscenes, that really that really cool fight scene between him and Cyrax, and I mean, it just, you know, it's, it's classic stuff. Um, and all the Lin Kuei characters were always my favorite, just because Robot Ninja. Hello, you know. I mean, Sub Zero, Sub Zero is a badass, no question. Sub Zero was always kind of like the historically toughest character, but uh, yeah, getting to play Sector was just it was it was an unexpected treat. I didn't even know till I showed up, and then when I got to to do it, I was just over the moon. So. And I suppose, Dave, uh, working in, in terms of a blockbuster uh, franchise in terms of Mortal Kombat 11, I suppose the budget in terms of the extent to deliver a computer game in terms of the concept, I suppose it's probably one of the biggest fighting games in terms of budget, in terms of production, in terms of the sheer scale that goes into creating a game of that sort of magnitude. It's not a game that can be reproduced over a month or two. This is a game where there are so many sort of in depth sort of features and special effects and oh, for so, sure. so much in terms of uh, choreography and stunts and uh, motion effects that uh, this is it probably is almost like the, the FIFA's that come out every year in terms of it takes uh, probably a year to get uh, perfection in terms of what the finished product. Oh well, it'd be longer than that, and you know, and honestly, you know, the the work that we did. As the voice actors, we we had a number of sessions because there were a lot, you know they kept adding sections and changing things and refining it and and just building it out. But you know the amount of work that all of the coders and the programmers and and the writers and and the stunt people and all that I mean they they labored on this thing day in day out for years, just like they always do on games. You know the the amount of work they put into it and it shows if you look at the game. Um, just the quality of everything one visually it's gorgeous it looks amazing the you know the fight the all of the fight choreography all of that stuff is ridiculous um you know the fatalities are completely over the top in the best possible way um and and again the, the writing i mean the story the dialogue all the interactions and the depth of it and the fact that you do have all these split off timelines and i mean there's a lot of complexity as far as maintaining a through line of plot and characterization. So, you know, the writers and, and all of the guys on that end of it, just, they really brought it, you know, they really brought it and it shows in the game. Um, and, and they also were really concerned about, uh, you know, making sure that they were consistent with the lore. And, you know, th there were some, some changes that were made with characters that I know some of the fans didn't react to uh, all that well, but I mean, that's, that's the nature of anything like this. Something that's, that is this big and it's been around this long you're not going to make everybody happy. Uh, I think by and large, people seem to have really, really been happy with the game. Um, you know, I certainly was. Uh, ju as, just as a fan, I was happy with it. Um, and I'm just just to know that the guys behind it, they really care. And they really are invested in trying to to maintain this lore that they've established over this, this you know, several decades. So, I suppose that, Dave, I'll bring you on to the uh, what's talked about and the the circles and in, in not only the Mortal Kombat circles, but in terms of the circles all over the world. Big excitement now in terms of what's supposed to be coming down the pipeline in January 2021, the new Mortal Kombat movie. It's been roughly 20 years uh, since the last adaptation in 1997. If ever there was a real grow and a humming for a movie in the last decade or so, this is probably one that has been in the pipeline for an awful lot of years but probably in terms of I, I saw a, a, an interview an article with uh, Lewis Tan who's playing one of the characters in the new Mortal Kombat movie and he was saying to, he was saying how deep how sinister this new movie is in terms of uh, how graphic how R-rated and he said to he said in an article he quoted 
it was almost gone down the lines of uh, the dark night, the joker in terms of that mm. level of uh, where it's uh, where it's at sort of, and it left him with one or two sort of sleepless nights, even though he was actually playing a, a character in the franchise. And do you think that's because uh, Mortal Kombat, in terms of what they can do now, in terms of being more R-rated, is more acceptable now in terms of 21st century? Back in 19, 1990s and early 2000s, everything was more censored, more PG-rated, more thought of trying to keep it in line of what is termed a, a family sort of orientated and maybe this movie now is getting back to market comment is now probably getting back to its sort of roots to that sort of hardcore sort of sort of va- for a fan base that it has and maybe a, a more adult themed sort of movie concept oh, yeah for sure uh, i mean certainly you know audiences have changed to, to sort of the standards have changed about what people want to see, what they're okay with seeing. And I mean, again, it, this is not going to be for everybody. It never was. Uh, and if it's not for you, that that's fine. I mean, it's, you know, it, it's, but I think the idea is that they're trying to say, all right, this is kind of this world that we created. Let's, let's explore this a, as a real world. Let's take it. Okay. If, if all the things we did in the games, if that was really possible or we could do that in real life what would that be like and let's dig into that and and obviously with the story you know you it's i mean you've got the classic good versus evil you know you've got the whole earth realm and and so you know protecting earth realm from shao khan and like so you, you so there's this classic good versus evil thing and these really interesting characters from all over the world who are coming together to defend the earth realm and i mean it's so it's it's kind of a you know it's kind of a classic story as far as that goes, and I think just the idea of getting to see, uh, you know, that's kind of been the thing now is you know gritty reboots or dark things, and it's like not everything needs to be gritty and dark. Some things can be what they are, and you don't need to make you know kind of make them messed up. But Mortal Kombat, by its very nature, is gritty and dark conceptually. So. So yeah, as a fan, I'm when they announced this movie, I was over the moon. I was thrilled. I thought, oh, I can't wait to see this. This is going to be cool. So, so I'm really looking forward to it. I can't wait to see it personally. And I suppose, uh, Dave, in terms of uh, your character now, Spectre, you have portrayed him. If someone created a sort of a Mortal Kombat dictionary and they put the character Spectre uh, in the dictionary and they left two blank sentences underneath. And they asked you, Dave B. Mitchell, to write those two sentences, having portrayed sector. What would you like those two sentences to read? Oh, about the character or about me? About the, about the character. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, oh, I, no, that's, that's a really good question, actually. I, I just feel like, uh, I don't know how to answer that in a short way. The I just feel like when when they put it in front of me, I just felt like, yeah, here, here he is, Sector. You know, he he willfully signed himself over because he wanted the power to defend the Lin Kuei and to you know. I mean, so he's he you know he is honorable in his way in that his motives are to defend his clan uh, and and you know to get revenge, which everybody always liked that apparently. But uh, I, I don't know. I mean, I guess in a way, there's something kind of noble about what uh, about sector and that he was willing to give up his humanity in order to save his clansmen so um i guess that would be a really long-winded way of answering your two questions <laughs> i didn't answer that at all i'm afraid but i, I suppose uh dave finally lastly for me in terms of the martin combat franchise uh franchise element uh the loom and i of martin combat 20 years going now it almost feels like a uh, James Bond esque. Uh, once you're part of the furniture, as the saying goes, you'll always be sort of part of the furniture. And I suppose Mortal Kombat, uh, uh, you'll be playing Sector, hopefully, if, or you're currently playing Sector, Vice and Roll, hopefully, you'll be playing Sector for a good few years to come. But maybe in 20 years or 30 years' time, no doubt Mortal Kombat will still be going and there'll be adaptations of it. And when you look back and when people do their research and then did Google or Type or Skype or the uh, new generations and your name will always crop up uh, beside a sector character in terms of voice name and uh, uh, only a few have so far throughout the, since its origin its origins Martin Combat back in the early 90s how 
how thrilling is that for you? I know you've done numerous voiceover uh, characters and sort of, and you're probably proud of all of them. But in terms of Mortal Kombat, I suppose it's a franchise that will probably go on, I imagine, uh, into the next two decades or so. To be associated with that as a voiceover actor or even an actor, is that a sort of a rewarding sort of uh, uh, experience because you know that your name is going to be known all around the world that people who pick up a copy of the game are going to see your name on the credits when they look through the research or YouTube or watch uh, sector that they're hearing your voice. Is, is that a real, a great honor, a great sense of pride for you? Well, here, yeah, I'll, I'll show you my shirt. <laughs> so if, if that adds like, obviously audio, you can't see it. It's my sector shirt, which I, uh, which I bought as soon as I booked the role. Cause, uh, I, again, huge fan. So, so yeah, I mean, uh, particularly, uh, you know, I'm the nice thing is about my career is that a lot of the things that I have gotten to work on and that I get to work on, I'm a fan of those types of things already. So, you know, I'm kind of playing in my own sandbox as far as a lot of this stuff goes. And it's, it's, I come to it from the standpoint of, okay, I, I'm familiar with how these, how this works. I know this universe, or I know what this style of thing is, or, oh, I'm a fan of this kind of thing. I get it. Um, and certainly, uh, this this definitely ranks in the top tier of the things I've gotten to do, as far as you know my my personal feelings towards the project. Obviously, it's Mortal Kombat, so you know professionally, it's it's a huge huge thing for me to be part of it. But it's one of those things that it, it crosses the line where it's like, yeah, I'm on a professional level, I'm happy to have every job I have and I, I love my work and get to work with great people and great stuff. Um, but they're the ones that stick out that kind of cross over into the personal side where it's like, okay, as an actor, yeah, I'm glad to have the work and I'll give it my best every time. But just as a person, you're like, ooh, Mortal Kombat. So, so yeah, I mean, there's a few like that. I've you know, gotten to work on Star Wars stuff, on Star Trek stuff and, and Mortal Kombat. Those are probably as far as like things that have been with me for a good portion of my life that I'm a fan of those three things, I think all definitely, you know, kind of tick the boxes for personal and professional and, and certainly getting to work on Mortal Kombat. Absolutely. One of them. And I enjoyed every minute of it really did, really did. And, ho and I hope I'll get to do some more. And, and if not, I'm just proud to be part of the part of the legacy. Um, and going forward, it's something I'll always be able to say, yes, I, I was, I was part of Mortal Kombat. Uh, on that note, uh, Dave B. Mitchell, a pleasure talking to you today in terms of your voiceovering of Geras, and more, uh, more specifically, your voiceover sector in Mortal Kombat X and Mortal Kombat 11. Uh, oh, Dave, just, 11, just 11, actually. Mortal Kombat 11. Yeah, it wasn't me and X. Just, I don't want to take credit for something I didn't do, so yeah. Mortal Kombat 11. Uh, so, Dave, an absolute pleasure talking to you uh, today. We wish you all the best in your future endeavors. And, no many doubt we'll hear your voice uh, as the tone of sector for many more games to come. And who knows, uh, maybe some guest appearances or cameo roles in certain uh, Mortal Kombat projects in the future. Uh, Dave B. Mitchell, a pleasure. And uh, Dave, stay safe and stay well to you and your loved ones in these troublesome times. Take care. Thanks so much and same to you. I appreciate it. Fight.